everyone, a few things that I think are really important for you to know and understand about general price lists at a funeral home. So the FTC or Federal Trade Commission oversees the production of um, general price lists that are given to consumers for funeral homes. They regulate what is on the general price list, what we have to list out and spell out for the consumer. So we, by law, have to list certain items, um, whether it's basic services, the embalming price, other preparation of the deceased, which would be casketing, dressing, cosmetizing. We have to also list an immediate burial price and a direct cremation price, along with everything else. Now, some price lists also have packages and all these other things that funeral homes include in them. They can get really confusing, really hard to understand because there's a lot of pricing that you don't need the day of. Only the items that you're selecting based on the services and merchandise that you select are the things that are gonna be on your final contract. One thing also to remember is that you are under no obligation to give your information to a funeral home if you just want a price list to look at. By law, you can walk into any funeral home and ask for a price list and they must give it to you without anything else needing to be given to them. You do not have to sit down and talk with them. You do not have to give them your name and number, nothing. They need to provide this information to you. A lot of funeral homes have also begun to post their price list on their website, which is really nice for the consumers to be able to pull up. So once you have that general price list and you're looking at it, especially if you are price shopping or comparing one price list to another price list, really remember that never everything is not really apples to apples always. Just like shopping for anything, there's maybe inclusions that aren't listed, maybe a funeral home A throws in a dozen bookmarks and funeral home B just does the bare basic minimum for that price which is why theirs is lower than the other. There might be a few things that are built in. Also with direct cremation, especially, please remember this, when it comes to the apples to apples comparison, one funeral home may include a viewing time that somebody can come, you know, oh, my aunt's coming from out of town and she really wants to see her sister. Can we come see her? Sure, we'll set up that time. It's all included in the price. Where? The other funeral home may charge more for that time. They char may charge to get the person's feature set and bathing and all of those things to get the person ready for viewing where it might be included already in another person's. So make sure you have a finalized itemized price, not just the direct cremation price off the price list because there may be things that are added that are not included on that price list. Also, you'll have cash advance items that are not on a general price list because those are not things controlled by the funeral home. So the crematory charge, the death certificates, the medical examiner permit signing, which needs to be done for cremation. So there's all these other charges that may be added on later and they're all legal, but you need to factor those in to the looking and comparing prices between locations. If you're somebody who's trying to be helpful to a family and help them choose choose a, career, a funeral home based on price so that they can find the best place for them, understand also that a family needs to feel comfortable with where they're calling and who they're talking to. So establishing a relationship with the funeral home and with the funeral directors is important as well. I know we try and protect families um, if we're helpers. We want to protect them from funeral homes and having to deal with funeral homes and you know somebody taking advantage of our loved ones that we you know our friends and our brothers and sisters and family members that have to go make arrangements try not to step in to the process defensively and thinking that somebody's going to take advantage financially of your friend, your loved one, when they're going to make arrangements. That general price list is gonna give you a really key base to the financials. Always have an itemized contract in front of you at the end of the arrangement. Always have everything line itemized so you understand what those costs are and what you're paying for and to make sure something's not included that you don't want. 
understand your prices. At the end of the arrangement conference, you are signing a contract, your choice to sign it, make sure you understand what it is you're signing. It should all be reflective on that general price list by law. So price lists are really great. They provide a lot of information, but make sure you take the time to look them over, understand each item and why it is there. Thank <laughs> you.